to grind for hosting this is really an amazing space um, so it's just cool to be in this setting um, I just wanted to start out with a brief bio because I'm sure most of you haven't heard uh, about my company or me um, so I just wanted to do a quick run through of my line I'm not gonna really go in depth into you know my process or anything like that um, but if you have any questions about it at the end uh, you're more than welcome to fire away Um, so this is one of our newer products, it's called Bobots, and it's just a very open-ended uh, balancing and stacking toy. Uh, kids can build towers with them, they stand in awkward ways, um, and yeah, it's just kind of a goofy, fun toy, but we just released it, it's been doing well, um, so we're going to kind of be putting out some more editions of the Wobots, uh, we're doing like a Ninja One, and just different goofy things. It's a big uh, tower. Um, we also make these puzzles. So all of our toys are really geared towards kids age one to six, and most of them have some educational qualities. Um, not all of them, but they're all definitely interactive. And uh, so the puzzles are, there's just a four-sided block puzzle, so there's different images on each side. And then we have various theme sets. So that's all trucks. And then um, we have one that's all shapes, and we have insects and uh, zoo animals. Um, this is our most popular product. It's called Match Stacks. And we have a bunch of different theme sets, but it's basically a matching and memory game. So again, it's super simple. It's nothing uh, groundbreaking by any means. But um, it's a good tool for kids to just sort of explore their uh, vocabulary, work on color recognition, things like that, and then as they get older they can flip the discs upside down and play memory with them. And so we have, like I said, different themes. This is dinosaurs, obviously. Uh, we have sea things, numbers, so, and then there's a bunch more. Um, this is just a multi-purpose rattle, push-along toy really geared towards young kids um, just to be able to kind of grab something and the wheels rattle against the body so um, you know for a really young kid it's just something that can kind of engage them simply and we have different uh, styles of those as well um, so the the theme obviously is childhood which Kim already mentioned and um, the way that I kind of was thinking about it and the way that I want to approach it was drawing parallels between childhood and starting up a creative uh, project or a business. Um, it could be any number of things, like even a new hobby. Um, but I see certain characters and certain characteristics in my own kids who are aged basically two and four. Um, I see characteristics in them that that I want to sort of draw on and emulate in my business, and then I see characteristics in them that I want to stay completely clear of uh, in every possible way. So uh, I'm gonna run through some of the good ones, and some of them, there's gray areas, there's good and bad things about them, but um, anyways, uh, so to start out, their, their creativity and their imagination, I think, is probably one of the most obvious and prevalent things, and one of the things that adults really admire in kids. And I don't really think I want to explore that too much just because I think it's so obvious and especially like in a room full of creative people, you kind of get the value of creativity and imagination in sort of everyday life. Um, but I certainly pay attention to kids and just see how they interact and explore the world and the creativity that they draw from the world um, is just really interesting. So something that I always keep in the back of my mind when 
I'm not only you know designing products, but even just running day-to-day -day operations of a business, I think it can be useful. Um, so one aspect of kids that I really use practically in business all the time is um, the eagerness to learn and just the curiosity in the world. Kids ask a million questions on just a daily basis. So the rate of learning when you're starting a, a new project or a business is very accelerated. If, if you're like me and you have no prior experience in the field, um, like when I started my company, I didn't have any experience in the toy industry, I didn't have any experience in manufacturing, and I didn't even really have experience in design. I have you know, a fine art background, but it was totally different. Um, so really just starting fresh, so everything is accelerated, and that's exactly the same with, with children, because everything is new every single day. So um, I look to ways that, uh, I look at ways that they execute that so efficiently, and questions is obviously one of the main things. So um, one of the lessons that I've learned along the way these past couple of years is um, just to simply ask questions, which is seems like such an obvious thing, but for me it wasn't, so I have to assume that maybe for other people it's not either. Or maybe you think you should ask questions, but you don't because you're self-conscious or you think you're gonna ask the wrong question or appear unprofessional or just stupid or ignorant. Um, so that was one hurdle that I've kind of had to get over and I'm still getting over, but it's been really useful in business. So one, I just wanted to give one example, but I mean, there's, there's many. Um, one example is that we do a bunch of sales, uh, not a bunch, but some on uh, flash sales sites. Sorry. Um, and I'm sure you're all pretty familiar with flash sales sites, but essentially it's a, one to maybe three day or a week sale where your goods are maybe 40% off retail or something like that, 25% off. And a lot of these online sites require you or ask you to drop ship products. And drop shipping is, they take the orders, they never touch the product, you just ship it out. Um, I'm sure most of you are probably familiar with the concept. But So I started doing these and um, I agreed to drop ship even though I knew that it was gonna be a pain and it was gonna cost extra money and labor and packaging and all that but I just figured that was what you did and I didn't think to, to charge for it, even though I thought like, eh, maybe I should, but I didn't want to seem foolish and not know the industry standard, so I just didn't ask and therefore I did not collect a drop ship fee and they, of course, did not tell me about it because they're the ones that would be paying it. Um, so after I did a couple of these sales, I was like, man, this is ridiculous. And I started working with a new <coughs> site and they sent me their spreadsheet with all the fill out the product information and your prices and everything and um, I saw on their form it said uh, do you drop ship and you say yes or no and then it says uh, what's your drop ship fee you know and I was just like oh, shit man like, <laughs> so, like I could have been charging a drop ship fee like what the hell and like even at that point like I didn't even I still was like so self-conscious and like starting out, I didn't even want to ask him about it. And I was just like, ah, screw it, like just do it, you know? Like I'm just not gonna worry about it. And then finally, like the next time I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna call him and ask. So I just called him and like kind of swallowed my pride and was like, uh, yeah, so I saw the dropship fee on the form. Uh, I haven't been getting a dropship fee. Like what do you, do people usually get that? And they're like, oh yeah, it's just kind of a standard thing. I'm like, ah. Oh, and like, you know, uh, you know, I never asked for before, what do you, like, what's the, the charge, you know? Um, so they told me, and so I was like, uh, all right, yeah, I think I'll, I'll, that'll be, that's my dropship fee, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, so that was it, and they, like, they, they took it, and um, so ever since then, I've been getting the dropship fee, and it wasn't like a game changer in the business, it's not, like, substantial, but it's enough to just cover the extra expense of doing it and where you feel like you're not getting robbed every time you like put tape on a package and send it out your door. Um, so anyways, that was just kind of a, one practical example of you know asking a really simple question can really go far and usually um, prior to that, and I mean I still do this now, you know if a question comes up I'm just like oh, I'll just Google it, you know, and you go on Google and you look it up and you find all this information 
most of which isn't actually pertaining to your particular situation, so you might find bits and pieces, but in my experience, I end up just spending so much time trying to sort through it all, where if I would just call somebody and ask and you know swallow my pride, then you get the right answer faster and you just kind of move along. Or sometimes you get the wrong answer, but you know it's worth a shot. Um, so uh, another um, quality in kids that, uh, that I really appreciate is their fearlessness. So this is my two-year-old son, uh, Oliver. He was a little younger when this was taken, but we were hiking uh, at Starved Rock. And, you know, this isn't the Rockies by any means, but if my wife and I weren't right behind him, like ready to grab his hood at any moment, he probably would just jet left into the, the rough of the woods, probably <laughs> trip on something, you know, and like tumble down a hill and come up on a river and like reach for a rock and then fall in the river <laughs> or like go straight and go off a cliff on the other side. Like he would have done those things undoubtedly. Like we grabbed him a million times. So like the fearlessness, it's a fine line between fearlessness and recklessness, but um, you know, kids definitely embody both to the extreme. Um, but in business, you know, this is like fringing on sounding like, you know, motivational speech being like fearless, which is, you know, I don't really think this is true, but I definitely think that there's moments where you have to apply that man mentality and you just go for it. Especially for me, like when it comes to actually making a decision um, to make a big change in life or switch directions or start it, like try out a new product or invest in a new, you know, machine or program or something like that. Sometimes, you know, if it feels right, you just turn off the all the, the crap in your head and you just go for it. But with kids, they don't have any crap in their head. He doesn't even know what, what he's doing. He'll just, but but he's still fearless with it. He just goes for it. Um, so I always appreciated that. That also kind of ties in with like asking questions and just leaving your uh, inhibitions behind sometimes. Um, and then finally, uh, there is just playfulness, which is kind of the, the main characteristic of childhood, is just their relentless pursuit of fun and joy and like wacky good times. That's pretty much all they do. Um, so this is one of my, this is my youngest cousin, and he's just messing around in the shop with some of our new robots. <laughs> That's my older son, and uh, yeah, I just thought like that's just that picture to me is like a perfect symbol of childhood, like just the exuberance of little things like jumping around in a pile of leaves um, are really amazing, and you know playfulness in your projects I think is extremely important, not to be overly playful because if the human race was all like children and extremely playful all the time, we. I don't even, we probably wouldn't even be around anymore. Like, we would have obliterated ourselves years ago. Um, so anyways, you know, all things in moderation for sure, but there's the times where you have to, you know, really pull that playfulness out. And for me, it usually comes like at the end of a really busy period, like whether it's getting out a big order or at the end of the holiday season after we've just been slammed and I haven't had time to do anything fun for a long time. Um, so what I'll do is basically just close up the shop for like a week um, or you know maybe a little less or more depending on what's going on and I'll just just mess around and play or make stuff that um, I've been wanting to make not even necessarily toys but just other objects or fun things um, so I think that's important to to leave that time to sort of integrate into your routine and if you can't do it at work obviously you can sort of make that time outside of work and do it at home but to sort of keep that playful Extremely, extremely um, erratic, and uh, they will go from this to something like this in literally a matter of seconds. And like, so 
the highs are so high. I mean, like, look at that. <laughs> like, that was the best. It, you would think that he just won, like, every championship ever in the world, and, like, the best thing, you know, like, he just met the love of his life. And then it's like, literally, the next, this, this is what happens next. And it could have just been like, oh, like, uh, I dropped my lollipop, or I didn't get the blue cup, I got the red cup, and like my brother got the blue cup. Um, so, I mean, this is of course like the, the, the age range that I'm dealing with right now, so it's kind of in the, the front of mind. But, um, but this sort of, um, you know, the highs and lows, the extremes, um, I think are very similar actually to when you're starting out a, a business or a project because um, you know there's just it's it's an emotional roller coaster and same thing with childhood but you know like one second you'll be designing a new product you'll come up with something that you're like oh this is great and you'll be on cloud nine or maybe you'll get a, a big order come in and you're just you're thrilled you know and then um, you know the next second while you're waiting for to get like all these orders out and you're waiting for this uh, delivery of uh, you know tubes or a product um, you get a neon green lid instead of a dark green lid which seems insignificant but like when you put your like kind of heart and soul into these things and that shows up and like you're waiting to get all these orders out it's just crushing and like that's a little more significant than dropping a lollipop but it's the same feeling I think because um, you just, you're, you're so filled with like optimism and, and joy when something great happens. And you could be so crushed the next second. But the thing is, it's not the end of the world. And I think one of, one of the things that I've been working on in my business is just realizing that, that, you know, there's always these missteps along the way. So I don't let those highs get as high and I don't let the lows get as low. And it's all right, like, for me to get excited about things, but, the more excited I get about things, you know, if I'm like throwing the, the pile of leaves up, then um, the harder it's gonna be when, when something really hits. So it's something that I try to uh, definitely keep in check. Um, what else is there? Am I all right on time? So, okay. Um, sorry, here, kind of went off a little bit off my planned course of action. Um, so, now basically I'm just going to kind of, I'll kind of wrap it up. Is it alright if I wrap it up? Am I too early? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, not a, I'm not a public speaker, obviously. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, so like, you know, like I've said with, with childhood, it's, it's really just kind of an amazing uh, roller coaster and there's, there's so many uh, wonderful and, and horrible things about it and it's exactly the same with, with my business and I think in uh, any endeavor, but especially creative ones, but really like anything. Um, when, you, when, you, when you observe kids and you observe their flaws and you observe their kind of like glories. Um, there's just so much that you can pull from, and you see what you need to control more of and what you need to let loose of more. So you're kind of like finding this middle ground between, you know, the, these ch ch childhood traits and then these sort of serious adult, responsible type traits. And depending on what your occupation is or what you want to do, you might be more one side to the other. Um, but I definitely think that um, it's just important to kind of keep in the back of your mind and everybody knows their strengths and weaknesses and um, I, I know mine more, more than anybody else's for sure um, and I've got, got plenty, of, uh, plenty of weaknesses but <laughs> um, yeah I think just kind of keeping those, those things in the back of my mind sort of keep me going and give me direction but uh, yeah, I think uh, I think that's about it for me, guys. I hope that was all right. <laughs> <laughs>